Hey all, Alex here at your home of the Music Deep Dive, and today it is time for a review of the 1996 biography by Nell Irvin Painter, Sojourner Truth, A Life, A Symbol. Uh, Sojourner Truth, one of the most, um, dare I use the word, iconic um, names and figures of the uh, anti-slavery movement. Born into slavery under the name Isabella Bomfrey uh, to... Uh, into a Dutch settlement, was sold several times, uh, subjected, of course, to many abuses, uh, physical, uh, emotional uh, rape as well, uh, before escaping at around the age of 30, after which time she uh, converted to Christianity, got involved with a couple of different uh, upstart religious sects, and became an itinerant preacher, where uh, she became embraced by the active anti-slavery movement, in the Northeast as one of their most powerful speakers. And when I say most powerful speakers, I don't necessarily mean her being an orator in the way that like a Frederick Douglass was. Um, Truth was uh, very much um, illiterate uh, for the majority of her life, but she was someone who spoke with conviction and she could command attention and she could uh, utilize her story and utilize her image in a really... um, impactful way and when I say her image I mean because she kind of embodied this kind of contrasting image of slavery with what popular depictions were at the time she was a middle-aged woman forced to work in the fields like the young men who were popularly associated with the idea of the slave were so her image her being a woman in and of itself was a jarring contrast um, and all the more impactful because of it Her image then became even more enhanced after the publishing of the Emancipation Proclamation and the uh, mass publication of a speech she had given in 1851, which is now uh, colloquially been called the Ain't I a Woman speech. Um, It's the uh, piece of rhetoric that is the most closely tied to uh, Truth's name. Um, And we will talk about it because the biography makes a big point to talk about how the framing of that speech in this republication is a bit disingenuous to Truth's actual background. Uh, But it did make her a um, even more national name, and for the remainder of her life, she was very, um, um, a very major figure in both the um, racial justice movements and then as well as in the nascent feminism movement and the women's rights movement of the time. Uh, the author I want to talk about as well, Nell Irvin Painter, longtime history professor at Princeton, owner of a doctorate from Harvard. Her research and her field of study has focused on the history of the South and the experience of black people living uh, in it, both before and after the Civil War, as well as just the idea of what it means to be black and the concept of race in general. Um, most of her books are these kind of extended historical think pieces and these narratives of specific eras. This truth book is the one time where she has really delved into true biography. Um, And it is excellent. Um, You know, this is a very cleanly written book and a book is a book written with authority about a subject that demands that sort of treatment, I suppose. And in its title, You know, there's the two ideas here. You have the life and the symbol. Um, And it's both of these different things that Painter is trying to tackle and uh, compare against one another. Um, As far as biographical details, um, they are a little bit lacking and sometimes majorly lacking at points um, for Sojourner Truth. The... Um, She published her own narrative of Sojourner Truth, her own slave narrative back in uh, 1850. And that narrative has been um, held up as an example of, on the plus side, being an example of like a female slave narrative in a genre that was very much dominated by male stories. Again, you're going back to that idea. Um, But has also been criticized because the kind of ghostwriter, if you will, the uh, person who um, took the dictation from truth, essentially, um, interjected a lot of themselves into the narrative and a lot of, uh, preaching. Um, I've not read the narrative. I've seen the excerpts in it, in this book. My understanding is that it is written in third person rather than in first person. Um, if I'm wrong, please correct me. But 
that in and of itself kind of distances you from it. Um, and yeah, and, and this goes to the whole symbolism side of things then, because the life of Sojourner Truth, really from the moment that she steps into any sort of a public sphere, is already being taken and is already being kind of distorted by usually well-meaning abolitionists, uh, people who are using these people's lives to further a political agenda that in their eyes they believe will benefit them ultimately, and obviously did in the long term. Um, but there's a complexity to that, and Painter wants to really kind of unravel this complexity and grapple with it on a deeper level. Um, there is... Um, as I said, the anti-woman speech is something that Painter kind of talks about at the beginning and says that, you know, there's kind of a lot to unpack here. And we'll get into it. Um, she talks about it as it happens and how it was reported on in the moment when she made the speech in 1851. And then she talks about the republication in 1863. Now, um, Sojourner Truth, as I said, was brought up in a Dutch settlement um, in New York. Um, for the first few years of her life. Her native language was Dutch. Um, so because of that, she always spoke with a um, sort of generally kind of Dutch accent. Um, she would have had a very different way of speaking than um, a lot of black people who grew up on southern plantations. However, in the 1863 republication, they changed the language that she was using and some of the words that she was using um, to reflect a traditionally Southern dialect. Um, and that is a very, you know, and there's a, there's a lot to grapple with there, as, as Painter says, because on the one hand, you understand that, you know, there is a clear political and social movement, like, driving this. Like, there is a point behind doing that. They are trying to make truth more relatable, to a popular audience and popular conception as to who slaves were. Um, and Truth herself was someone who was very willing to go along with that sort of thing um, based off of her actions and her statements. And, um, you know, at what point does it become erasure? And at what point does it um, potentially turn the discussion of slavery into a purely North versus South type of thing when the fact is that Sojourner Truth was brought up in New York, uh, spent her entire life in New York uh, while she was enslaved, um, which, and, you know, this is just obviously tip of the iceberg stuff as to how complicit, like, Northern states were in the slave trade for a very long time. Um and it raises the question, like, is that a, you know, how much of that portrayal, how much of that perception is really was politically motivated in the sense of generating purely anti-Southern sentiment while trying to remove Northern culpability from it? I mean, it's a fascinating thing to think about, and I love that Painter takes that time to grapple with it, um, but I also love that she wants to get to the nitty-gritty and the truth of uh, Sojourner's life as much as... Uh, is possible. Um, and there are several, you know, her, her image and her um, persona really served as a um, trailblazing figure for several different social justice movements, which was really the case for a lot of people at that time. Um, she was a very um, ardent feminist um, in these early years, there's a really great example of a speech that she gave where um, people, critics, had been comparing, um, comparing her to men, saying that she sounded like a man and that was she actually female. And famously in the speech, she silenced her critics by actually um, bearing her breast in the speech. And that's a really powerful moment, the way that Painter describes it. And, you know, throughout, there's just this... And I think maybe the end conclusion that Painter wants us to take away from it is, you know, there there are, we can get lost in the weeds of have we kind of, you know, by, by not really understanding Sojourner Truth's personhood, um, like, 
are we doing a disservice to her even if we are doing a service to the movement but also <clears throat> is like if our image of her is like this like you know this larger than life thing um you know is is there is there anything wrong with that in like the grander scheme of things because of the fact that she represents so much because of the fact that she genuinely did so much because of the fact that she um you know represents this beacon of hope and represented that beacon of hope to so many people at the time i don't know there there's it raises a lot of questions and i don't know that it tries to conclusively answer anything is my broader point that i don't think i made very eloquently here uh but the bottom line is i think this is a great biography um i think it's really engagingly written i think the issues that it grapples with are plentiful especially for not being a super long biography uh clocking in at just under 300 pages and yeah i think um you know people like frederick Douglass. i think frederick Douglass is kind of the person who you're going to read about if you take a high school or a college class you're going to learn about his story more likely than anybody else's and there's damn good reason for it um but the figure of sojourner truth is an important one and um while not an obscure figure by any means, I do think that her story and again, the considerations that you have to take into account when talking about her story are some of the most fascinating things you will read about from this era. And because of that, I would give this book a high recommendation. Um, so check it out. With that, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. As always, more reviews are to come. Hit that bell for notifications and tell a friend as well. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time right here at your home of the Music Deep Dive.